Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Which one of us can it be? Who is the traitor? He says that even among us, the chosen twelve, there is a traitor. And now he speaks of a betrayal before night's end. Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Can one of our numbers be so blind? Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? It's unthinkable. Who could it be? Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? Why should one of us do such a thing? Is it I? Is it I? Is it I? I find it so hard to believe. That one of us will betray the Lord is one of God. Surely the betrayer is out of his mind. He refuses to make a move. Well, I've made one. Well, good morning. We welcome... Good morning. Look at me. (laughs) I just woke up. You know, everybody has to take a nap, don't they? (laughs) Good evening. We welcome you tonight to our uh, Maundy Thursday service here at First Baptist in Springfield, whether you're watching online or whether you're in the house here. We're so glad that you're with us tonight, and uh, we're looking for uh, to hear from God tonight. He has a word for us uh, when our hearts are tuned to Him. There are um, three things I'll take care of real quick here. Uh, Please remember that we have a Good Friday service tomorrow at 12 12 o'clock, followed immediately by a a light luncheon. On Sunday morning, we have our Easter Sunday celebration at 1030, uh, preceded by Sunday school classes. And uh, and the third thing is, if you picked up a... um, uh, a order of worship tonight, the, uh, the one that has the Monday Thursday worship on it. On the back side is a chronological listing of the e- post-resurrection events. And I have found that tremendously helpful in the last couple of weeks as I have been reading it. And so I wanted to encourage you, if you have time before Sunday, read the, read the resurrection story in chronological order rather than the way you usually do it and see if there are things that you might learn as, uh, as I did. Now, um, I want to uh, explain uh, Monday, Thursday. Somebody said, you get your days mixed up, Monday or Thursday? I mean, what, you know, what's going on? No, no, Monday, Thursday uh, is a word, or anglicized word, of a f- anglicized form of a French word. M-O-N-D-E, Monday, and you people who speak French will laugh at my pronunciation, I'm sure. But that French word uh, comes from the Latin mandatum, Mandatum. Now, for you linguists, I want you to help me. Uh, be- what English word do we get from mandatum? Can you help me? Mandate. Very good. Very good. And so as we begin our scripture reading tonight, I'm going to ask you to listen for the mandate, will you? And I'm going to ask you about it when I'm finished. We begin with John 13 tonight. John chapter 13, we begin in verse 1. Now, before the feast of the Passover... When Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. During supper, when the devil had already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments and, taking a towel, tied it around his waist Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but afterward you will understand. Peter said to him, You shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I do not wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, The one who's bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not every one of you. For he knew who was to betray him. And that was why he said, Not every one of you are clean. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, Do you understand what I have done for you. You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for I am so. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought also 
to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you also should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So what was the mandate? Can you help me? To wash each other's feet, which was a symbol of what? Humble service, right? You see, washing the feet of guests was a Middle Eastern tradition centuries before Christ came. Travel, as you know, was done by foot over dry and dusty roads. Weary travelers were greeted with a bowl of water with which to wash their feet. And if their host was well-to-do, <laughs> there was a servant ready to do that task for them. And here Jesus turns the cultural tradition upside down by having the master wash his followers' feet. As his life demonstrated, Jesus chose to serve others, and this foot washing is an example of that service. It's an act of humility. Jesus said, here's the mandate, for I've given you an example that you also should do just as I have done for you. It was a model of how to selflessly serve one another in this world. Jim's going to help me tonight. For those of you who didn't grow up in the church culture of washing someone else's feet, perhaps this is a lesson of reaching or serving outside your comfort zone. As Christians, we're called to go into our world and serve. We're called to be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ, right where he's placed us. It's easy to do the symbolic part, isn't it? But Christ's mandate on this Monday, Thursday is to carry a humble attitude of service into our nation into our, na into our neighborhood and into the nations. Would you stand with us? Celebrate the coming of the Savior. Come behold the wondrous Look to Christ to conquer. 
Continuing in John 13. I am not speaking of all of you. I know whom I have chosen. But the scripture will be fulfilled. He who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I am telling you this now before it takes place, that when it does take place, you may believe that I am he. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever receives the one I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. After saying these things, Jesus was troubled in his spirit and testified, Truly, truly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he spoke. One of his disciples, whom Jesus loved, was reclining at table at Jesus' side. So Simon Peter mentioned him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So that disciple, leaning back against Jesus, said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is he to whom I will give this morsel of bread when I have dipped it. So when he had dipped the morsel, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. Then after he had taken the morsel, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, what you are going to do, do it quickly. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the money bag, Jesus was telling him, buy what you need for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the morsel of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. When he had gone out, Jesus said, Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and glorify him at once. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow afterward. Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Jesus answered, Will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. Let's stand together once more.
I'll continue reading in the Gospel of John, John chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you also you may be also. And you know the way to where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known, uh, if, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still uh, do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe in me, or believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on according or on the account of the works themselves. Would you stand with us? Let's sing to the glorious Son of Christ, Son of God together. <laughs> Spoken all creation came to 
Let us continue in our reading of God's word in John 14. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by the Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you, you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. 
Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you, let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here.
I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it, bear, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. Would you stand with us? Let's give ourselves to the Lord because of the love that he has for us. This life is an altar where I want to offer my soul and my mind and strength. Cleansed by your mercy to live a life worthy of the one who called my name. to 
If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not have been guilty of sin, but now they have no excuse for their sin. Whoever hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works that no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin, but now they have seen and hated both me and my father. But the word that is written in their law must be fulfilled. They hated me without a cause. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceeds from the Father, he will bear witness about me. And you also will bear witness, because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said all these things to you to keep you from falling away. They will put you out of the synagogues. Indeed, the hour is coming when whoever kills you will think he is offering service to God. And they will do these things because they have not known the Father nor me. But I have said these things to you that when the hour comes, you may remember that I told them to you. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. And none of you asks, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Let's stand together and sing that fount and the only true thing that we know, the Son of God, our Savior. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone 
this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of Christ I live there in the ground his body lay light of the world by darkness slain then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory since curse has lost its grip on me for i am his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of in life, no fear in death, this is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no seam of man can ever pluck me from his hand, till he returns. A little while, and you will see me no more, no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What is this that he says to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they were saying, What does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, Is this what you are asking yourselves? What I meant by saying, A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. Truly, truly, I say to you, You will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. And your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. In that day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. 
Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. I have said these things to you in figures of speech. The hour is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures of speech, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you uh, that I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came from the Father. I, have, I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I'm leaving the world and I'm going to the Father. His disciples said, Ah, now, we are, now you are speaking plainly and not using figurative speech. Now we know that you know all things and do not need anyone to question you. This is why we believe that you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour is coming. Indeed, it has come, when you will be scattered, each to his own home, and will leave me alone. Yet I am not alone, for the Father is with me. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, yet but take heart, I have overcome the world. John, the gospel writer, places these teachings that we have been reading in the context of the Passover. And then Jesus uses the Passover meal to institute the Lord's Supper. That verse that Jacob ended with uh, was prescient, wasn't it? I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart. I have overcome the world. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper together, recognizing that this was what Jesus instituted in this context of trouble and trial. Let us have hope and confidence in our awesome Lord. We read from Luke 22. So they prepared the Passover, and when the hour came, he reclined at the table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup after they had eaten, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. Deacons, if you'll come forward, let's serve the elements. And please retain your portions until all have been served.
There is a clear pull tab on top that exposes the bread. The bread, of course, the symbol of his broken body. Jim, would you thank the Lord for the body broken for us? Lord, it's especially poignant this Easter season to celebrate communion together. His body was just terribly torn and beaten. He did it for us, Lord. We, we thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. Amen. You may partake together. And after he'd eaten, they, he took the cup. That this cup is a symbol of a new covenant that I seal with my blood. Bonnie, would you thank the Lord for the sacrifice of his blood? Lord, we just thank you. Thank you that you went and sacrificed your son on the cross, his blood shed for our redemption. A sacrifice that would not have to be done over and over like the Old Testament sacrifices, but one that was complete and allowed us to be reconciled back with you. We ask this in your name. Amen. You may partake together. Father, as we leave this service tonight we do so in a completely different situation than your disciples did leaving that meal we can look back and thank you for the victory over death and sin that you have brought to us and yet father in another way may we leave tonight and consider John 17, your prayer, your agonizing prayer to the Father in that long night between the supper and when he was tortured and crucified. And may that sacrifice take on new meaning for us as we worship you. In Jesus' name.